everyone and welcome to this Info Security Magazine video interview here at Info Security Europe. I'm joined today by Benny who is the CEO of Zero Networks and we're going to be talking about a zero trust network architecture approach. But Benny, thank you for joining me. I think the first thing um, we should discuss is the zero trust approach. Um, it's something that's been discussed a lot, talked about a lot. Um, what's your thoughts on it? How um, is it being implemented? Um, get your take on that first. Sure, thanks for having me first. Uh, so let's first debunk those two sets of words which are uh, unfortunately used or abused almost too much in the industry. When those two sets of words, zero trust, were actually there, it was actually in the 90s, believe it or not, before people started to use it uh, broadly in the cyber security space. And it was a DOD organization that actually meant before machine A can communicate to machine B, everything is closed, machine A needs to authenticate with some third party in a strong authentication fas fashion like MFA, and only then machine B can open that communication port to machine A, and then it can communicate temporarily. That is zero trust, period. Now, the industry has taken that into something called ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Access is that acronym, which is the VPN replacement. Essentially, how do we have the VPN or the remote access open without actually opening the port, like the machine A, machine B thing, which is great, but people often forget that you need to do the same thing inside the network, between all machines. That's the core, that's the essence of Zero Trust, and that's extremely hard to do. That's essentially segmentation, if you will, or even micro-segmentation, which uh, so far has been ex extremely hard to do, and actually in zero networks, that's what we make easy, essentially. And with the like segmentation approach then, and um, implementing a zero trust approach, how does that fit with the current threat landscape that we're observing right now? Why is it important with such an evolving threat landscape where things are changing all the time? Great question. So essentially, just statistically, if you look at 90% of attacks, they all start with a compromised laptop from phishing or whatever, which then the attacker, because the inside of the network is fairly open, the attacker can start using various tactics to spread throughout the machines in the environment. Zero trust approach, again, using it at the core of what it really means, if all of the ports and all of the machines are closed, essentially blocking inbound communication-wise and don't trust each other, then attackers cannot spread, they cannot do anything. So it's very relevant to the threat landscape. Specifically in the last few years, ransomware has gone super automatic, just using a tons of vulnerabilities that exist on these various open ports. And if you close these ports down, guess what? Ransomware is dead. They can only compromise one or two machines, not the organization. So it's a completely different thing. So it's, in principle then, it sounds quite simple. You block things off, it will stop people. Why is it not being like, what? How widely adopted is it, it's not. I guess? So according to Gartner, uh, by end of 23, it's actually less than 5%. Uh, I would even claim maybe less. Uh, the reason it's so hard is because if you are in this approach of block by default everything inbound on every machine, what do you allow? And who gets to decide what to allow? That becomes a very human problem because then you need security operation teams or network security operations team to start doing allow listing per individual machine in the organization to open things up. Nobody's going to do that. That would be very crazy to do, which is why everyone, okay, let's keep it open. I, I don't want to F with that, mm -hmm. essentially. So that's why nobody has implemented this so far. The manual operation, the human element of it, just takes, is the Achilles heel, heel of that, essentially. So how are you, like at Zero Networks then, trying to change that or trying to, I guess, help and assist people with that problem that is like, it's just too hard, it's just too much to deal with, I've got a, like that human element. That's exactly uh, what we set out to do. So I left Microsoft, I was a leading product in uh, the Microsoft EDR, one of the best EDR platforms in the world, and I understood nobody's solving the game, the problem of why attackers are winning. And what we do to micro-segment in a click, in essence, there's like actually multiple things there, but the biggest one is automation, without the AI for a second. So we just took this big problem of how do you know what to keep open per machine, and we've humanized that approach by splitting it into smaller and smaller and smaller problems to decide if we need to open that yes or no. And essentially it's just 
in a click we know how to automate what to keep open. We can do that throughout the environment, and it's super accurate, and that's what that's really the core thing for us to scale or for us to help you or the, any organization to scale micro segmentation in a click. There are other things like we're agentless, which really helps as well, and we also have dynamic self-service access. So there are certain things you never want statically to open or close, you want to have on demand based on some strong authentication or MFA. So we have that going as well. Yeah, and I, I often ask this because I think our audience, they might be thinking, well, we've not even started to think about this or we've thought about it, but we haven't started the process. So where's the place to begin implementing the micro-segmentation and the zero trust network architecture? Good question. So first of all, perfection is the enemy of the good. Like, uh, start with something. We usually you want low-hanging fruits. Uh, to zero trust overall, again, there's the external piece of it and there's the internal piece of it. Like, when I did it with the hands, it's actually half and half. It's not. The internal from a security posture and mitigating risk is much bigger, uh, although more popular and easier to do is that external thing. But just pick one. Uh, either a modern ZTNA, there are also problems with that, which we've innovated on that as well, or the internal thing. Pick a solution that is easy, uh, potentially just go to your crown jewels, although I feel like that would not be enough very quickly, because ransomware or something will spread to other machines, that will have access to the crown jewels. So you really want all machines, clients and servers, on-prem and cloud, completely segmented off or micro-segmented off, and you need a solution that can scale. So those are the two things I would trust, start with, essentially. And how long does that like segmentation process take then? Like, because obviously it's not just a flick of a switch. Well, I'm biased. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like with legacy, I call the micro-segmentation vendors, that's month or years, depending on the organization size. It can be very tedious and hard. Um, with us, it's we call it from zero to hero in three meetings. It's one hour to deploy, one hour to see the automation happen, and then after a month, one more meeting, each one of these one hour uh, to just, everything automatically moves to protection, whatever you click and choose to move to protection or segmentation mode, and uh, that's it. You just, you literally binge Netflix throughout that one month <laughs> and you just see everything happening for you, essentially. Yeah, and just going back to that kind of like human element, within the business, how does the, um, how can the CISO kind of get the buy-in from other stakeholders within the business that this is something that needs to be done? Well, there are multiple risks or things to talk about use cases wise. So obviously ransomware is a bold issue today, so that's one aspect. Uh, some organization need various regulations like PCI DSS, which micro-segmentation can help with, or uh, also need to pass a pen test so a pen test can be a very red report with a lot of bad stuff. So micro segmentation done right, that's a key thing, uh, can turn out very completely green almost, and we do that all the time. Um, there's just better segmentation, better controls that can really stop attackers, depending on the mindset, reduction of risk, you know, vulnerabilities that you cannot patch. Guess what, if you micro segment it off, if attacker cannot reach it, they cannot exploit the vulnerability. So it's not critical anymore almost to patch. So those are uh, some of the aspects that can drive and get more people on board with doing this. And then finally, I think, let's go back to what you mentioned at the beginning, the slow uptake and uh, like that, those really small percentages of organizations that are actually implementing zero trust. Do you see that changing in the future? How do we get that above 10%, 20%? What's, what does the future for zero trust and zero trust network architectures look like to you? Oh, I, I, I feel that this is accelerating super fast and I actually read a couple of days ago from Gartner that by 2026, 60% will have it. So it's accelerating and I feel that and Gartner is uh, saying that as well. So yeah, I feel there are solutions that are now modernizing the approach to make it really easy, because only if it's simple to do, people do it. If it's hard to do, usually you don't do it. So there are more and more solutions to make something like this much easier. Uh, and that's why, and plus, with the pressure from ransomware or other threats that are just spreading and taking down an environment in, an e in a few minutes maybe, those combined will make this adopt much faster, I think. 
Great, thank you so much for joining me, Benny, and uh, giving some insights into Zero Trust there. That was really excellent. Uh, for more news from InfoSecurity Europe and all the cybersecurity updates you need, please do head to the InfoSecurity Magazine website. And thank you so much for watching.